Welcome to NICU Essentials Lecture Series. Today, we'll be doing a brief overview on NRP, the Neonatal Resuscitation Program. We'll briefly take a look at the NRP algorithm, after which we will go over preparing for resuscitation, the initial steps of newborn care, supplemental oxygen, the use of an alternative airway, chest compressions, medications, post-resuscitation care, and preterm considerations. The following is the NRP algorithm which outlines the order in which to resuscitate a newborn infant. Before jumping into NRP, let's briefly discuss transitional circulation at birth. When an infant breathes, pulmonary resistance decreases and blood can travel to the infant's lungs. Gas exchange then occurs in the lungs and returns to the heart. If you are called to a delivery, important questions to ask before birth are, what is the expected gestational age? Is the amniotic fluid clear? How many babies? And any maternal or perinatal risk factors? These questions allow you to appropriately prepare for your resuscitation and obtain the necessary equipment. The following is a checklist that is often used to prepare for resuscitation. In general, it is important to remember to collect the necessary equipment to warm the infant, clear the airway, ventilate, oxygenate or intubate the infant, and medications if needed. Rapid assessment in the initial steps of newborn care involves assessing the term, tone, and breathing or crying. If any of these are abnormal, then the infant should be brought to the radiant warmer for further evaluation. The initial steps of newborn care are warming the infant by placing him or her under the warmer, positioning the head and neck to open the airway, suctioning clear secretions from the airway using a bulb syringe, drying with a warm blanket to prevent body cooling, and tactile stimulation by gently rubbing the infant's back and extremities. Assess respirations by looking for breathing or crying. If the infant is apneic or gasping despite the initial steps, then you should proceed to PPV administration. If an infant has labored breathing, then you should proceed to CPAP administration. Heart rate should be greater than 100 and is most accurately measured using a stethoscope. If your heart rate remains less than 100 despite initial steps, then you should proceed to PPV administration. Indications for pulse oximetry include when resuscitation is anticipated to confirm perception of persistent central cyanosis, when supplemental oxygen is administered, or when PPV is required. The following chart describes target preductal O2 saturation goals based on minutes of life. This can be used to determine whether supplemental oxygen is needed. For supplemental oxygen, set the flowmeter to 10 liters per minute. FiO2 can be adjusted from 21 to 100% as needed. Decrease the oxygen concentration until the newborn can maintain saturations within the target range without supplemental oxygen. Supplemental oxygen can be delivered via a flow inflating bag or a T-piece resuscitator. CPAP or continuous positive airway pressure is indicated if a baby continues to require supplemental oxygen after a few minutes, has persistent cyanosis, or persistent labored breathing. CPAP should be given only if the heart rate is greater than 100. CPAP is administered 
with a peak of 5 centimeters H2O via a T-piece resuscitator or flow and fading bag. Do not administer more than a peep of 8 centimeters H2O as this can cause barotrauma. If CPAP is to be administered for a prolonged period of time, consider insertion of an orogastric tube to assist in gastric decompression of air. If you encounter meconium stained fluid in a non vigorous newborn, perform resuscitation under the radiant warmer and clear secretions with a bulb syringe or Dealey catheter. Intubation for tracheal suction is not recommended in the newest NRP guidelines. If the fluid is meconium stained, but the newborn is vigorous, you may use a bulb syringe to gently clear secretions. PPV, or positive pressure ventilation, is indicated for apnea, gasping, heart rate less than 100, or for an oxygen saturation below the target range despite free-flowing oxygen or CPAP. When performing PPV, it is important to clear secretions and position yourself at the head of the bed. Position the baby's head and neck in sniffing position. Select the appropriate size mask and place the mask on the face. For infants greater than 35 weeks gestation, FiO2 can be set to 21%. For infants born at less than 35 weeks gestation, the FiO2 should be set between 21 and 30%. Set the flow meter to 10 liters per minute. Ventilation should be done at a rate of 40 to 60 breaths per minute. Start with a PIP of 20 to 25 centimeters H2O and a PEEP of 5 centimeters H2O. Assess for chest rise, breath sounds, and heart rate while administering PPV. Frequent assessments of heart rate should be done while administering PPV. In general, PPV should be administered for at least 30 seconds. If the heart rate becomes greater than 100, one can discontinue PPV. However, if the heart rate is not increasing or not increasing appropriately, perform your ventilatory corrective steps, which will be described shortly. If the heart rate remains less than 60, despite your ventilatory corrective steps, then an alternative airway needs to be considered. Ventilatory corrective steps, or Mr. SOPA, includes the following. Adjust your mask. Make sure you have a proper seal and consider the two-hand technique. Reposition the airway by placing the head slightly extended. Suction the mouth and the nose using a bulb syringe or a suction catheter. Open the mouth and lift the jaw forward. Increase your pressures in 5 to 10 centimeter H2O increments with a maximum of 40 centimeters H2O. If the above steps do not result in an appropriate increase in heart rate, then an alternative airway, such as an endotracheal tube or a laryngeal mask, must be placed. An alternative airway is indicated if PPV with face mask does not result in clinical improvement, if PPV is lasting for more than a few minutes, if chest compressions are necessary, or for special considerations such as diaphragmatic hernia or surfactant administration. The following table describes the endotracheal tube size for babies based on weights and gestational age. To prepare for intubation, select the appropriate blade based on gestational age. Make sure to check the blade light for proper function. Your equipment should include your blade, a CO2 detector, stethoscope, ET tube of appropriate size, stylet, and suction catheter.
Position the baby's head in midline with the neck slightly extended in sniffing position. Always hold the blade with the left hand. Adjust the height of the bed as needed and use the right index finger to gently open the baby's mouth. This picture illustrates the key landmarks to identify when intubating. Once you are able to see the vocal cords, you may pass your ET tube down. Secure the tube and then attach the CO2 detector and PPV device. The following table will help you determine the tube insertion depth based on gestational age and weight. Confirmation of ET tube placement can be assessed by CO2 detector color change, a rapidly rising heart rate, symmetrical chest rise, breath sounds, and mist in the ET tube. If there is sudden deterioration after intubation, consider displacement of the ET tube, obstructed tube, a pneumothorax, or equipment failure. A laryngeal mask airway is indicated in newborns with congenital anomalies involving the mouth, lip, tongue, palate, or neck, as well as infants with a small mandible or large tongue, such as Robin sequence or trisomy 21. An LMA is also indicated when PPV has been ineffective and attempts at intubation are unsuccessful. Chest compressions are indicated if the heart rate remains less than 60 after initial steps and your ventilatory corrective steps. Using the thumb encircling technique, compress the sternum just below the nipples to approximately one third of the diameter of the chest. Compress at a rate of 90 to 100 compressions a minute. Coordinate with PPV with a compression to ventilation ratio of 3 to 1. If administering chest compressions, oxygen concentration should be increased to 100%. Assess the heart rate 60 seconds after starting compressions. Compressions can be stopped when the heart rate is greater than 60 beats per minute. Medications such as epinephrine are indicated if the heart rate remains less than 60 after at least 30 seconds of PPV that inflates the lungs and another 60 seconds of chest compressions coordinated with PPV using 100% oxygen. Epinephrine can be given IV or endotracheally. The concentrations and dosages are listed here. If administering endotracheally, follow with several breaths of PPV to distribute the medication into the lungs. Assess the heart rate one minute after administration. If the heart rate remains less than 60, increase the dose and repeat every three to five minutes. A volume expander, such as normal saline, can also be administered during resuscitation if the heart rate is not improving. Post-resuscitation care, which is often performed in the NICU, involves frequent reassessment of vital signs, UVC insertion, point of care labs, and a chest x-ray or antibiotics if indicated. Respiratory measures include supplemental oxygen, nasal CPAP, or mechanical ventilation. The following table describes the post-resuscitation management one should consider by system based on the initial presentation and needs of each infant. Lastly, when attending the delivery of a preterm infant, there are important considerations one needs to take into account based on the preterm's needs. Remember to use a thermal mattress under the blanket to prevent heat loss. Wrapping the baby in a plastic bag will also assist with preventing heat loss. Make sure that temperature is maintained between 36.5 and 37.5 degrees Celsius. Oxygen should be set to at least 30 to 35% FiO2. For PPV administration, 
set initial pressures to 20 to 25 centimeters H2O with a PEEP of 5 centimeters H2O, as these infants are at higher risk of barotrauma. Consider surfactant administration based on gestational age, and during post-resuscitation care, remember to monitor temperatures, blood glucoses, and apneas and bradycardias. This concludes our lecture on NRP.